This is going to be a video showing how to install your custom Bethane mid-drive that uh, was made for the, to fit the mats in perfectly. It comes with the Bethane BBSO2, the battery tray, your battery, your crank should already be on the, on the motor when you received it. I'm going to go through this step-by-step -step process. There's instructions either in your box or you can download them off of our site. There should be a link in, the, in this video. Step one is to take off the bucket. I'm going to do everything up on a work stand just so that it's easier to see. Uh, just a few things before we get started. I obviously have I've done this many times. I've also already gone through and loosened a lot of the bolts just to make it really smooth. And I would suggest be ready to take your time and make sure that you do each step correctly. Uh, some things may be a lot harder than it looks like on this video, but with some patience, you'll, you'll be able to get through this install. All right, moving on to step two, we're going to remove the chain guard. Uh, that will be a three millimeter hex wrench on the top and bottom here, and then a four millimeter on the back over here. This is where, again, I've, I've already removed a lot of these nuts and bolts just to make this process quick on the video, but. Get those those on done. It should like come right off. Uh, you don't have to remove the chain while you install this kit. Just have to get it out of there. Chain stays on. It's going to be the exact same size chain. Uh, we'll move to removing the cranks next. Before I pull the cranks, the cranks. I'm going to take off the pedals. I remember that the right hand side is a regular right-handed thread, and that the left hand side is a left-handed thread. So I'll turn that one the opposite way. That's especially important when you reinstall these. I'll move to a eight millimeter for the cranks. Again, it's gonna be a lot tighter than that when you take them off, but just did this to make the video smooth. And then this is one area where you're gonna need some tools that are specially made for, for bicycles. This is a crank puller. Uh, there's a few different designs but you'll need a crank puller. Don't attempt this with a, if you don't have one. Uh, pull the, the right and the left crank. Once they're off, then we'll move to pulling the, uh, the bottom bracket out. All right, I'm gonna remove the bottom bracket. This is the most critical part of the whole install, in my opinion, that we don't get wrong. If there was one piece of the install that you were going to have somebody else do, like a professional bike shop, I would say you would be removing the bottom bracket. There's, we're using a, a custom tool here uh, that fits the bottom bracket. If this is tight or if you spin and strip this at all, it can become really problematic to try to get this out. I've worked on bikes where this has been completely stripped out. The only way we can get it out is literally to weld a piece of metal onto the bottom bracket cup in order to get a bite on it to, to remove it. I'm going to go ahead and show this process in the in the video, but highly recommended that this is something that if you're not really comfortable doing this, that you have somebody else do. In addition to the bottom bracket tool, I'm actually using a lock that locks the bottom bracket to the spindle so that it will not move on me. The right hand side of the bike is opposite than the pedals. It's a left-handed thread, but on the right-hand side, the cup. Uh, this shows you how sometimes how tight this is. This is my monster wrench I only use for this process, pretty much. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we go the correct direction. And once that is loose, the entire bottom bracket cartridge will come out, and then I can get the other the other side. Now that the one side's out, the cup should be a lot looser and I can just use a regular ratchet wrench on my, on my tool to get that out. It's just a regular thread on the left side. And now my bottom bracket's clear and ready to put the motor in. I'm going to take the motor, I'm going to slide it on the bottom bracket. I'm going to make sure that I don't scratch the paint with this corner here and with these edges here. Just slowly get that in, make sure that the cables Brake cable and shift cable don't get pinched in there. I'm gonna spread this apart and push it down over those 
the frame there. And then one thing I want to make sure I do is take this wire, this is the wire harness that's going to go up to your handlebars, and slip it in between the motor and the bottom bracket. This is a frustrating step if you miss. Once you get the retaining nuts on for the motor, you'll realize you can't thread that through. So make sure that that goes right in between there and push off to the side. I'm going to take the four M5 bolts that were used to hold the chain guard and put them back in to these four holes and then we'll move over to the retaining nuts for the motor. All right, it's a year later. A few things on the kit have changed, so I'm going to be splicing in a few uh, different clips in here to explain those changes and try to make it as smooth as we can. We've got a yellow bike in here, but next thing we'll be moving on to is installing the cable, the shift cable into the shift sensor. Uh, to do that, I've got to disconnect the cable at the derailleur and I'll get a better shot of that. I'm going to use a five millimeter hex wrench should, uh, to loosen that cable. There would have been a ferrule on here. You can either slip that ferrule off or cut the cable. I've cut it off. Your kit does come with a new cable, but I always try to save this cable if I can. It just makes the install a little easier. So if I'm careful so that this end doesn't get frayed. Uh, once it's frayed, it makes it really hard to thread into the shift sensor. Once I disconnect that, I can just pull the cable out through and I'm going to continue pulling it out all the way here. So now I'm closer to getting it threaded through the shift sensor. I'm going to take the shift uh, cable and my shift sensor and I've got to thread this through the sensor and as I thread it through I'm going to twist it clockwise. If I twist it clockwise as I'm pushing through, it will it tends to want to braid the uh, cables back in place instead of fraying that end. Now if the end does get frayed, of course you can swap out the, the entire shift cable. Or if your cable is old, I would, I would do it anyway that, that came in the kit. But I'm going to get it in there and then as I push through, I'm going to twist it. And then it's... It didn't, it didn't fray that end. So I'll pull this through. I want to be really careful that I don't kink my cable anywhere. So I just make sure that I don't, that it goes in nice and smooth. Okay, I can now move on to putting on uh, this retainer bracket with these two uh, M5, M6 uh, bolts using a five millimeter hex head. I've already gone and installed the rest of the, put my bolts back in to the frame. So I'm going to install this. There's two ways to put this on. There's these teeth that are coming out. Make sure that those teeth are towards the frame. So slip that on and then I'm going to install the, the bolts. I want to just get them started threaded. I'm not going to crank down on one side before I get the other one. And these, these can strip out because you're threading into aluminum. So just go back and forth as you tighten it so that you're putting pressure on one, then the other. And then get those tightened down. Then I'm going to move on to my retaining bolt. You're going to need a special tool to put on, on this one. Uh, we supply that tool in the kit. It's the, the piece that looks kind of like an owl. Uh, it hooks onto any one half drive socket wrench. I've got a nice long one here, but I'll thread that on by hand. And when you're putting this on, be careful because you can pinch your fingers. And here I've done it before as I'm tightening this up. Just that your fingers can get down in here and get pinched. So be careful with that. So I'm gonna tighten this up. This is supposed to go to 50 to 60 newton meters. To be honest, I usually always torque it past that. Uh, it's not, you don't necessarily have to put a torque wrench on there, but I know about what, what it should be. So it is more than, more than you would, than more than 60 Newton meters. So I'm gonna just really get that down and that's good. Then I go on to the last 
retaining ring. It's a beauty ring, but it's also a retention ring on top of that other one. So it's aluminum. So you want to really make sure that you're not cross threading this as you put it on. And that's the wrench for the other. It comes on the other side of that one. And just make sure that it's on completely square before you really put any pressure down on that. This one's a lot less. This is uh, about 30 Newton meters of torque. So don't want to over torque this one. It would just strip out since it's aluminum, but still want it to lock up against that other ring. All right, we're good there. I'm now going to take off the chain ring off my old crank and put it onto the spider adapter that's going to fit onto the on there to take these off. There's a few different ways to do it. This is a special tool from Park just, just to fit there. You can use a screwdriver. You can also turn those often just by without having that backer. Make sure you don't lose these. They're, they have a tendency to fall off and jump around. You're going to get the rest off with just with a impact driver without holding the other side. So this, when this gets installed, make sure that it's, this has a front side and a back side. This is the back side, it's the front side. Put the spider gear right on top and then go ahead and reinstall these. Put them all in first before you crank them all the way down and then then go in and tighten tighten them all the way up and go all the way around five times okay next step i'm going to install that chain ring back onto the onto the motor with the five m5 bolts that are black uh, and i'm going to go through alternating tight tightening these up I'm just putting them on loosely right now, and then once they're on, I'll go in a star, star pattern to, to tighten those. Uh, I'll show you how that, how that should be done. I'll also put the chain on at this point just so that uh, that ring doesn't spit on you as you're trying to tighten these down. So now I'm going to tighten number one. Crank it down and go across to number two, and then back across like I was drawing a star. Three, crank that down. Four, and then finally five, the last one. Make sure you get all five. Five. Well then. Get the chain put into its guide. This is a three millimeter hex head that I got to use to take this out. Again, this is so that we don't have to take the chain apart at all. So just feed that in there. And then I'm gonna go and put that bolt right back in to its place. I need to do the same on the bottom here by undoing, this is a four millimeter hex head. I'm gonna undo this and thread the chain up under the chain guide wheel. And I may need to use another wrench to hold the other side while I tighten this down. At this point, I this one I have to pull out a little to, to align it. That looks about right. Next, I'm going to install the chain ring on, I mean the chain guide over the chain ring. Uh, this comes with some M4, M5 bolts in your bag. There's also the bolts that you used that it was originally installed on. So you'll have some extra bolts. Uh, we send them just in case those threads got stripped out or something. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. I usually do these two. These two ends first before I move over to this last one. And sometimes I need to twist the chain guard down a little to get that lined up. Once it's in and twist it up, then I can go back and I'll tighten all, all three of these down. So one, 
two, and three. I'm going to install the left-handed crank arm uh, using an eight millimeter hex wrench. Make sure that this is tightened down fairly well. And now I'll go ahead and install the right and left pedals using a 15 millimeter wrench. Again, on the end of the pedals that's marked L and a R, make sure that the left side, the non-drive side, goes on the left. Left pedal's going on there. It's a reverse thread, just like we took it off. And on the right side, it's just a regular thread. Using a 15 millimeter or a pedal wrench, I'm gonna go ahead and install these. the next step. Okay, this next step is a little tricky to show in the camera, but I'll do my best here. We want to clean off the frame really good on this chain stay. And then I'm going to take the sensor, the speed sensor that came in the kit, in the bag, and I'm going to install it like this. There's a small little screw that came with this also. I'm going to go ahead and insert this all the way and then I'm going to tighten up this screw right now. We'll be moving it. Then I need to peel off this adhesive backing. And then right where the chain stay comes and bends is where I'm going to install this sensor. The adhesive is just to stop it from rotating once the, you get your zip ties on there that, are, that came in the kit. With your kit came some zip ties, and I'll use those zip ties now to, to attach the speed sensor to the frame. The adhesive is just there to prevent the speed sensor from rotating. The zip ties are what is gonna really hold it in place. With those zip ties in place now, I'm gonna take the speed sensor cable that's coming out of the back, of the battery bracket. It's gonna basically go on top of the frame and then come down here. There's a D shape on there, so it only goes on one way. Make sure that lines up right. And then there's this barrel nut that goes on, and just tighten that up by hand. Next, I'm gonna install the magnet that was in the kit. I wanna make sure that it goes on a spoke that is going to be accessible from the other side with a screwdriver. So I put that magnet on like this and I want this magnet before I crank it down with the screwdriver to be lined up right in line with the speed sensor there's a small round sensor and then this is where having this screw accessible I loosen that screw not all the way or else it's going to fall out and this will slide back and forth I want that as pretty much right up against it right now and then I'll take a large flathead screwdriver and tighten this magnet up uh, after it's lined up just right. I really want to torque down on this, well not too much obviously but we want, don't want this moving around and I'm going to double check it again. There should be about two millimeters of clearance on in between the magnet and the speed sensor. Once I get that, I'm gonna tighten up that little screw the rest of the way. You'll be able to tell if you got that space right or close enough uh, once your display is turned on. But we'll, we'll say that we got it right now. And again, I'm gonna take the rest of the zip ties I have and I'm gonna zip tie down my, my wire from that speed sensor, cranking it up. I, I'm going to use some extra zip ties here because I don't want that wire at all to interfere with my brakes or to come loose and get into my wheel. So I'll put one, I'll pull the wire up on top here, two, 
three. And I'm gonna work my way from here back towards the uh, back towards the junction box. And the reason I'm doing that is so that once I get here, if there's any extra cable, or if I don't have enough cable, I can push it back up inside. If you don't have enough cable, this actually can pull. There's a big loop inside here, and you can get yourself enough, enough cable to, to get around. When you do get to this point, make sure that you're not grabbing any of, the, of your shifter cable, your brake cable, with the, with the zip ties. But I'm just gonna keep going forward and get this all zip tied down really well. All right, the next step is to do some cable management to make sure that your wire harness is coming up through handlebars to hook up your brake levers and to make sure everything's nice and tidy. What I'm gonna do is loosen up these cable retention screws, put the wire harness behind there and put it in. Nothing should be with the E-kit, no, no cable should be coming up on the base here. Everything's gonna come up on the side and then go underneath. If you have a rack, the same thing applies. Your rack would just be in the place of these little Madsen uh, plates here. So I'll pull that up. This will get me ready to install our levers and that's what we'll do next. All right, we gotta take out the brake levers and take off the grips. Uh, in order to take the brake levers off, you line up these, this slot where the brakes come out and then I can take off my my cables that way. Do the same on the other side. Twist these till they line up. And then just pull them out. In order to get the grips off, I normally would use compressed air, but since not everyone has compressed air, I'm gonna show another, another way. Go ahead and pull the cap out, and then take a screwdriver, something, I'm using this one because it has kind of a soft end. I'm gonna work it in here a little and then I'm going to spray a little water down inside there once it's all the way around the water really helps it go in there then I can slide my grip right off so go ahead and do that on both sides and then we'll take off the levers right and left and I'll replace it with the lever that came in your kit both right and left we'll just slide right back on in that same same position same, same place and tighten those, tighten those up in the same, uh, same position as the old ones. Once they're tightened in, we can go ahead and hook the, the brakes back up. Remember to put them back together the way that you want them. Normally that's always the right-hand side is the rear, is the rear brake. We just can double check those, make sure that we get the, the rear brake. In order to do this, I'm gonna pull this out as much as I can, get it hooked on here. Again, I gotta line up that slot, uh, this one's a little stiff, there we go. And this isn't always the easiest. There's a small trick, I'll pull the lever to stretch it and then I'll jump it over so that it can get in there. Go ahead and do that on both sides. And then we've got the kill switch that goes on both levers, that tooth lines up just right. And now I can go ahead and, and plug these in. Well, both sides done. So plug the other side in. I'll do that off camera. Now that I've got both levers installed and plugged in, I've put the grips back on. A great way to put the grips back on is either with some rubbing alcohol or with some Windex, just so that that moisture that's in there will evaporate really quick so your grips won't be twisting around all the time. I'm gonna take the display, it's just a Phillips screwdriver, undo the one bolt at the top and snap that back on, installing the little nut on the back and uh, the bolt back in there, the screw back in there. Every once in a while this will spin on your handlebars and you'll have to put a piece of tape, either a piece of masking tape or electrical tape around your handlebars to prevent it from spinning. I like to make sure that it's just parallel in there and this will be readjusted once you sit on your bike. You may want to spin it forward or backwards. This, this is your green connection that needs to go in here. Plug that in, and then you'll be installing the thumb switch up on this side. You'll, you'll find that you're gonna be doing a lot of wire management during this installation. Uh, I've done this so many times, I know exactly where I should be routing each wire 
in order to clean it up. But once it's all in there, there's enough zip ties that you can get this all tucked up. Let's undo these two bolts, stick it on, and tighten that up. This last plug that's still here is for an uh, optional throttle, a thumb throttle. The kit doesn't come with it. I don't use it. It's not legal in all, uh, all states, so that's something additional. If, if you want to buy it, you can. I like to zip tie it onto the brake switch just to keep it out of the out of the way uh, before I start zip tying all my other cables down. So once that's in, I'll put one more. These zip ties that you put around here, don't pull them all the way tight. Your cables need to be able to move around so that they don't pinch up. So I leave this like a loop. Okay, the next thing I do is a lot of cable management. I'm gonna start by zip tying both the gear sensor and the wire harness, the main wire harness with a large zip tie. And then I'm gonna progressively, I'm gonna use these really small ones that came in your kit to go through and start zip tying the rest of it. I'm going to be hooking onto the, just one cable, either the brake or the shifter. Right now I'm just gonna be grabbing onto the shifter and progressively work my way down, taking my time to make sure that I really hide this cable up as much as I can. Once I get all the way down, I usually put three cables in between each brazed on uh, cable guide. So I would put one here, one in the middle, I'm gonna get, and then finishing it off with a large zip tie to go in that final spot to hold that in there so it never comes comes out. It's a little awkward to show in the video here, but just like that. And then I go back and trim all the zip ties. At this point, we need to adjust the derailleur, adjust our shifting. Uh, I'm not gonna show that on the video. There's a lot of videos that show how the best way to adjust your shifting. And then we're sliding the, put the bucket back on and your battery will just slip into place and you're ready to try things out. Now that I have the gears adjusted and the bucket back installed, I'm gonna install the battery. The battery bracket should be right in the most common place. There are a few variations of different bicycles, different mats and models, depending what year you have. You may need to slide this bracket forward or back. If that's the case, it's just a three millimeter Allen wrench. Loosen these two bolts and this will slide back and forth. The key should be in the very back position so that your pedal won't hit it on accident and break the key. So all it's gonna do is just go on top of that, slide back, and then to lock it in place, you turn that key. The battery's now installed and we can check out the, to see if things are working. You know, hold down the power button on the handlebar for three seconds. And we're good to go. Now I've got an electric mat and 